Hi fellow reefers, I'm Andy of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, as you must have guessed by the intro that I did, it's about diatoms bloom. What is it? Well, let me start there and then I'll give you a brief explanation as we build up this conversation or educational video, shall we call it. Uh, diatom bloom is actually, it's a uh, algae. It's the first uh, algae that uh, that you're actually uh, gonna get in, in the tank when the tank is completely cycled. Now, a lot of people, they have misconception about a diatom's bloom, and they say, oh my God, look at this, the, the, the tank is brown and the sand, and, and there's these uh, like uh, filamentous algae coming out of the rocks. Well, some uh, people call it the, the ugly stage, which is actually the the first stage when you turn on the lights because your tank is cycled. Like I uh, reiterated uh, shortly right now, you know, it is a good sign. It means that the uh, tank is completely cycled and now starts the process of the maturity of the actual uh, water, the, the water column and, and the aquarium, the reef as we go on. Uh, this happens to all of us. It doesn't matter. If it's a freshwater aquarium or tank, shall we call it, or a saltwater aquarium or tank or a reef, it always happens. Now, uh, once you uh, get it, how do you uh, address it? How do you get rid of it? Well, there's a couple of ways. Uh, the technical way, but not the natural way, which is how I, uh, if you followed me on the videos, you'll notice that I try to do everything as natural as possible. So, uh, like they say at Worldwide Coral, from Victor, from Lou, the owners, from Josh, I happen to know them personally, stability. Uh, stability and simple. Uh, that's the, one of the key factors and the goal of keeping a reef aquarium or any type of a, aquarium. The, 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 the basis, the foundation. If you have a good basis, a good foundation, you're going to be very successful for many, many years. So uh, going back to what uh, I was saying, how do you get rid of it? Well, uh, being that uh, it, what happens is the silica that's found in a new tank, may it be the, the sand or new plastic or on and on and on, uh, it, it will cause a high increase of phosphates. Now being that the tank is virgin, is new, then it doesn't have the proper elements shall we call it to combat it so that's when the phosphate will the phosphate i'm sorry will go up and that's well that's what actually will cause the uh diatoms bloom now diatoms bloom you uh you can get them at any time usually most of the time it's at the beginning of of the of, of the maturity of your cycle of a, of a new tank but if you overfeed, uh, that, that's one of the reasons that, it, like let's say, if you overfeed, whether it's chemicals or food to, to the fish, you know, they urinate and they poop, it will create a diatom bloom. Now, uh, also consider uh, diatoms bloom is actually a nutrient in uh, the water. So now knowing what I've told you basically, uh, how can you get rid of it? Well, one way is to add, uh, let's say, tanks, uh, yellow tanks or other fish that eat algae. And they'll eat it and, and that will be the end of the story. Or you can go ahead and, and buy uh, sand surfing stars, these white stars that you, you put them and they actually go like a submarine, they actually go down into the sand and they uh, eat the uh, algae. Another mechanical way is to actually add either phosgard or add GFO. 
uh, you can add a GFO with a GFO reactor to eliminate the phosphates and therefore starving that uh, algae of the phosphate which it feeds on and of course the uh, lights and then you uh, eliminate it. Now the simplest, keep it simple, uh, stability, natural way to doing it is what I uh, did. On my intro, uh, as you notice, I shot like different shots in different angles of the tank, showing some diatoms on the sand and, and like uh, filamentous algae next to that little uh, bird nest and all that. Well, that, as a matter of fact, when I shot that, in 24 hours, it was gone. Why? What you can do is what I did is the economical way and the natural way. I, I, I added a cleanup crew. That's what they, what they uh, recommend also. Add a cleanup crew. I went ahead to a white coral, which is where I always shop, and I, I got eight uh, blue uh, blue hermit uh, crabs. They went ahead. They uh, did their uh, thing, and the algae is almost completely gone. Another thing that you'll notice uh, when it comes to uh, diatom bloom is the uh, uh, glass. You can't keep it clean. Matter of fact, now I'm uh, good to go. As a matter of fact, it's, it's almost gone. But uh, up until the, the previous day, my God, I would uh, clean the, uh, the, the panels, the glass panels. Um, it, it was like a brownish, greenish algae. I would clean it and I'd say like within like 45 minutes or an hour, back again, clean it, back again, constant, constant. Until I started to notice that it was less and less and less and less. Until now, that's it. I, I took the magnet out. I, I, I'm really not a, a camper of... Of leaving magnets on on the glass although when I do film my little nine gallon nano you'll see that I have a um, two little fishes uh, nano magnet on it but that's a different scenario I'm, I'm doing this completely different if you follow me you'll see on my previous videos that this tank the way that I'm setting it up is completely different than the nine gallon uh, tank it's, it, it's an experiment that I'm actually doing I'm doing it different uh, the uh, the bacteria that I used on this one is different from the nine gallon and on and on and on. So that's basically what I wanted to uh, bring up. Don't get scared, it's not the end of the world. It's a process that all of us are gonna go through the diatoms bloom. Uh, so like like I said, uh, what I basically do to do a recap, what I do is I just went ahead, I, um, I got some blue hermit crabs and it, I let them do its work. One final thing that I thought I'd bring up that I had forgotten is water change. Uh, like let's say when you have the diatoms bloom, I would say do uh, like a 20 or 15% water change once every two weeks. And really, this is not a, a, a long process. It might take like three weeks, maybe three tops, maybe even uh, not even four, and that's it. It'll be gone, and then the maturity of the biological uh, filtration and all that, keeps um you know the, the bacteria keeps going on and on and on and on and on until like let's say approximately about one year uh the uh, water is what they call aged which I, I have brought that terminology um on my previous videos so i hope you uh, like this video if you did hit the thumbs up go ahead and subscribe to my channel and uh like uh you're noticing and for those that don't follow me i'm shooting a video weekly what I do is I start on Tuesday, I start the intro, then I edit the video, and usually Thursday, no later than Friday, every Thursday or Friday, I go ahead and I, and I up, upload a video on a weekly basis. So like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Also, something that I would mention is your protein skimmer. If you happen to have a protein skimmer on your tank, keep it on. Or if not, if you didn't have it on because of the cycling, turn it on. That will help a great, great deal to get rid of the diatoms.